Gentlemen, welcome to Venom League Day 2 here, presented by VNM Tourneys. Uh, make sure you do hit that follow button, and uh, I want to welcome you back. Today we have a great line of matches for you, ladies and gentlemen. I am casting alongside my good friend, Penguin. Penguin, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? My bad. Penguin, go ahead and introduce yourself, brother. Alrighty, hello everybody. I'm Pangan. I'm gonna be joining Shadow here today as we get in our second day of the Venom League. Very high excited to see some great Call of Duty. Uh, first day already in the books. Everybody has either won or lost their matches, but the team we have here featured today, Aspiration. Took it to game five with explicit gaming. Very wild and intense game indeed. The reverse sweep pulled out by Aspiration close across the board. Of course, except for the final two where Aspiration completely took that series away and dominated explicit gaming with nothing but ease. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you here alongside again with my duo caster, Pengen, new guy to the casting seat. This will be one of the first duo cast for Venom League. Very interesting indeed. So, to start Absolutely. this off, we will be having the two teams today, Aspiration taking on Team Upslay. Now, I honestly, that I don't know if it's Upslay or not. It's, it's U-P-S-L-A. That is my assumption. If somebody would like to correct me on that, feel free to do so. But for now, we're going to call them Upslay because that's the easiest way to put it. Aspiration will be blue. Upslay will be pink on your screen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, Aspiration, very dominant team so far, reading out one of the arguably best teams in this league out of Division A, or Pool A, should I say, which is, of course, Explicit Gaming. Explicit Gaming placing second in Season 3 of the Venom League. And Aspiration bringing a reverse sweep. You got anything to say about that, Pingan? Absolutely, absolutely. I've seen this team go through scrims. I've seen their games. They've definitely played very dominantly as long as they can lock down the setups that they want to get. And as long as they focus and don't, don't lose track of where they're going, they can definitely be a, a force to be reckoned with. Indeed, indeed they can. We should be getting started up here very, very shortly, ladies and gentlemen. For the time being, I will leave the starting... Actually, I will switch it over to an intermission screen, but we will be starting up very, very shortly. Uh, all the players just getting into the lobby real fast, and uh, we will be set. First map will be London Docks. Hard point, always a favorite for everybody. Usually one of the most uh, intense matchups. For any game mode, S and D, C T F, hardpoint, any of the game modes along that line, you really do have to play as a team, don't you, Pengen? Absolutely, absolutely. And London Docks is a map that a lot of people will play. I'd say a large majority of these these teams, first thing they go into scrims, first map they play, London Docks. Every team absolutely well practiced on this. They have the setups in the back of their mind as they try to go through these games and execute what they uh, have in mind. Should be interesting to see. Uh, 
how that goes for each team heading into this first match. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But from experience, uh, I did cast um, another league where Aspiration did take the first place win in that one. Aaron winning the MVP of that league. <clears throat> and to say, uh, you know, to count Aspiration as maybe a low type team, you know, unexpect them or, or just, uh, you know, under under what I guess expect the team yeah. or underestimate this team definitely should not should not underestimate aspiration they are a top tier young squadron led uh, or led by Aaron and coached by Frenzy very good team indeed now upslay I don't I haven't done too much research on them but from what I know they're a very very set squad now well, uh, we were going to get started, but it seems like we're going to have a host end. I don't really know what the situation seems to be here, but for the time being, I'm, I guess I'm going to leave the intermission screen on. Uh, anything more to add, Ping? Go ahead. Uh, at this point, not too, too much. Just should be interesting to see how each of these teams choose to set up on these hills. A lot of these hills uh, can be made into money hills if you do have that ideal setup in the back of your head. Typically, Statue is a hill that we see contested heavily. We see teams kind of hopping in and out of that. Lots of nades flying in. Uh, trades going back and forth. But as we uh, move through that rotation, no move caster, by the way. hard point, uh, we will tend to see a team set up there, have one person sitting in the back, have the rest of those uh, players watching the front. And that's typically where you can see uh, the time start to rack up. And one team really get out to a, a big lead. Indeed, indeed. And most of the time, <clears throat> if it's two very well-known and well-structured uh, teams, London Docks can indeed take its toll. It can go 250, 240. It can be within 10, 20, or 30 points, or sometimes even a blowout, like you said yourself, if the teams do stack up the time and play the map correctly. But we should be getting started here very, very shortly. Yes, indeed, we're getting all the players spawned up. Like I said, Team Upslay will be pink and Aspiration rocking that blue off the rip. I'm going to start off with my man, Aaron. And if I could say anything about Aaron, Aaron is definitely one of the youngest and most dominant ARs at his age. Unfortunately, donning the age of 16 cannot go to any CWLs. But still, still can perform online and still can go to these AM Pro events. It should be interesting to say the least. Most certainly. Off the rip here, you can see Hopefully Aspiration you. playing uh, off into the beer and off to the street side. Obviously, you want to get the other team spawning toward that street side. Aaron going to go ahead and t rack up this time. Moving on. See Sin able to pick up two huge kills. Aaron trying to win a gunfight here and fire is able to get that kill. Vasey along with a second. And so far, pretty good. Pretty good setups across the board. You can see they actually spawned out all of the players... Uh, all the way back by that train side and uh, they notice that instantaneously they all turn around and look to win those gunfights back towards that train side of the map indeed indeed and uh, as we were talking upslay able to take out at least three players last player alive for that old hill will be insult he will be cleared up and there you go team upslay able to grab the rest of this statue time which can be big but aspiration already on the rotation Uh, I had said before the match had started, you're going to see the exact same setup that I had anticipated. That number four on your minimap is going to be holding that back side, and he's going to be met with a lot of pressure here as two Able players. Able two huge kills as you Five, talk about him. Go. Oh my goodness, playing these spawns, absolutely perfect. Going to keep it on board here with Aspiration for just a little bit longer. You can see Shark running toward this back crane area, multiple players pushing into the spawn. Obviously, if you want to capture this main street hill, spawns are in need. Three players currently in the back. Insult able to find one. Racking up some shots by two players. Vasey and Aaron able to spot the two. One left alive. He will be weeded out. Oh, no! Insult loses that gunfight. Hyper able to win the next. And Upslay able to grab these spawns. I'm going to switch it on over with him. Pull up on Shark. He's going to grab the rest of this scrap time. As the rest of Aspiration go ahead and rotate. Aspiration able to pick up four huge kills indeed. I think we uh, 
have some mic issues in the in the Discord. We'll get that fixed up very shortly. But as we're talking, Aspiration clearing out up slightly left and right, getting two to three pieces. Nothing really tough coming out of it for him. Shark able to win one against Vasey. Surgeon getting multiple multiple pushes. He is going to be able to win one. Is going to be able to pick up the second. Shark going to clear him up though. Shark able to get two huge kills for his team to get the. Docks Warehouse Hill. There is two players for Aspiration currently playing toward this hill. I'm very sure we can get Pangan right back with us. Pangan, are you, are you here? Are you? Uh, yes, I just hopped back in here. Okay, good. As I'm going to let see... you go ahead and take it away. We're along with Team Upslay. Though, as I do join back, Upslay all actually die out of that old hill, and it looks like they're just going to give it up as they work towards this beer hill. Yet another hill that teams can tend to rack up a significant amount of time on. As you see, currently the score now, Aspiration up 110 to 30 against Team Upside. Uh, as they look to rack up even more time here as we move into this beer hill. But just like that, Upside look to break in through the back. Just one player left in the hill. One, however, dancing around this, this pillar here. <laughs> Circles. Unfortunately, you can't pick up the kill and... Aspiration is going to maintain control of that hill for now as four go down for Upslay. Yeah, I mean, I honestly thought they were going to be able to hold that hill. I mean, it didn't look too tough for them. They were winning their gunfights, and then you just had a little bit of a ring around the rosy. And as we're speaking, Upslay on this bit of a rotation, they are able to win two. Shark gets a huge two-piece nade. No real huge factors for Upslay so far. They are going to hold the rest of the scrap time. As I say that, Vasey is taken. Gets that kill to clear out barrels. And, I mean, I just said Upslay was rotated, and look at that. Aspiration already clearing them out and getting rotation set up. I'm going to switch it on board here with Vasey. Currently sitting on a three-kill streak. Does have 475 toward those streaks already with a glide bomb in store. Is taken out, unfortunately. Is going to call in his glide bomb. Let's see what he can try to pull off with it. Is going to spot one player in the back of spawn. He just the worst kind of timing. And something important to notice here is when he does call him that glide bomb, he's still sitting in that back underground spot, so he is going to keep spawning Team Upslay up near that hill. But Insult calls in a glide bomb of his own, picks up one kill. Looks like uh, they're just racking up the kills here. But as I do say that, Upslay breaking in the hill, look to maybe oh, start a comeback a into this match. Piece. Aaron. Oh, and Insult able to get that one. Surgic able to get the other. Oh, my goodness. And, I mean, as he was talking... You know, we were given Upslay a bit of some, you know, some momentum because they were able to hold the re most of that, you know, little bit of time, and then it looked like they could hold the rest of the scrap, but they really just got shut down toward the end there. I mean, if if I'm Upslay, I'm really wanting to get my rotations, get my spawn points down, because right now I'm being played with by Aspiration. And if you're Upslay, you really need to look to that AR player. Every single time on these rotations, Aspiration has just out-rotated him, grabbed the spawns, as quickly as they could and that's something that they've been falling short on so far i'm really looking to the ars of that squad to kind of pick up that slack get the rotations and start those setups for their team absolutely absolutely and i mean you can see on your screen hyper shark most of the players of upslay running uh ars and i mean you have about maybe one to two smgs and i mean you really got to look at survivor and shark they need to be playing this big factor 11 and 14 shark 9 and 18 is survivor i mean you've got to be slaying out you should have the most kills and maybe even the most times only two seconds for survivor and 14 for shark and as i say that shark is gonna fall from and when you're getting out slate this heavily it's typically difficult to get this setup but absolutely they don't need many kills all they need is those four intro kills and it looks like they're going to just four hit the back. But just like that, the glide bomb comes down and the call out certainly comes out. But as I say, that shark picks up one and they look to break in. Shark picks up two, actually. Is going to look well, for this third, third player. Surge going to wait out for his teammate. But he spots Vasey. Oh, not going to be able to win that. But then again, you can see on your mini map, Upslay spawning up close. They're able to take out three. Survivor trying to get those two key players. Aspiration has a humongous lead, enough to play with, enough to make your mistakes and fix it right back up. I mean, Upslay pretty much has to play this game perfectly if they want to bring it back. Most certainly here. I mean, the, the deficit's probably going to be too much to come back from here. 
as just like that aspiration is 25 seconds away from closing out this first map. Indeed. Make indeed. a huge hole on the yeah. side of Hupslay. Looking go. to start that here on this tin warehouse. So far on the warehouse, it's been nothing but Upslay, but I mean, this can change so dramatically. Three kills do go in favor of Upslay, nothing but pink across your board. I mean, if I, I mean, Vasey obviously playing a big factor and a big, you know, itch in the side of Asper or Upslay's neck. As I'm talking, of course, you Aspiration able to break right out of the upslay, warehouse but... hill. Three players fall. Only one player left alive that is Survivor. He's going to try to win these key gunfights. Isn't going to be able to get anything done. His teammates are spawned up, but I'm if I'm up slay, I'm needing to get in this hill and slay out. But Aaron is just running around with this team. And nobody really Absolutely. close they only besides need Survivor. Seconds. Here on this bottom 10 warehouse, and all the players from Upslay are spawning out. Survivor decided not even to move at that point. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that, Aspiration will take your first map, 250 to 92. Very interesting score, to say the least. Pretty dominant in the favor of Aspiration. Nothing really tough coming out of it for him. I mean, just to go over that first like map entirely, it's just, it was all Aspiration. Nothing really coming out of it for Upslay. An extremely dominant performance from them as they seem to get the setups they wanted i've not watched them to the point where i know exactly where they're going to go at all times but it looked like they're really comfortable in the setups that they did maintain and just like that they pull out the first map very very comfortably indeed indeed how it goes in the search and so far if i'm up slay i want to reset regain and get something figured out for this s and d because as you know, S and D does win, in fact, games because it's the main, it's the game mode with two. Of course, you do have hard point, CTF, and hard point, but the S and Ds are really where it changes. It can really be a swing map, and in a lot of these series, one team can either go up 2-0 and put themselves one map away from winning it, or the other team could tie it up and put it in a manageable position for themselves. Indeed, indeed. And I mean, S&Ds are really where you can calm the momentum down of any team that goes off of that first map and then come back and at least take over and get yourself resituated for the CTF. I mean, that's really what the main focus is when you're going into an S&D. Okay, guys, you know, if, if I'm up, say, I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, guys, listen, we got to reset. We took a pretty, you know, tough beating that first map, but let's reset, let's regain, and let's come back and take it to Aspiration. Absolutely. That's exactly the mentality they have to have heading into this next match. Just they need to win this map. Win this map to kind of put themselves in a good position uh, to take more maps heading into the, that third map uh, of CTF. It should be most certainly interesting to see how each of these teams do in this next uh, Search and Destroy matchup. Indeed, indeed. And uh, I just want to address the game volume. It's an OBS issue. I do apologize in advance. OBS has been acting really, really odd since their latest update. I think I've got it situated now. I just did a full reset of uh, the capture card. So um, I hope everything's going to be good on your guys' end. I know we're comfortable here in our caster seats. I mean... St. Marie S and D. Now, the St. Marie is usually, you know, an unfavored map. I've heard a lot of mixed opinions about it. It's either, hey, you know, it's a really good map for us, we like it, and, or you know, it's a terrible map. I don't think that we play or perform well on it. You know, it's it's back and forth. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a lot of teams like that. For example, in the pro league, you see one team that I I see as a standout that plays this map incredibly well is Red Reserve. The one thing a lot of people may notice if you're watching those matches is the number one thing they do that these teams may well do in their match is save their nades, especially on that defensive round. They might stun check to see if that other team is running into the bomb, but they save those nades and throw those nades at post plant positions that they may expect the other team to be playing at. And that's a lot of those intro kills that you'll see teams getting. Should be interesting to see if uh, either of these teams employ that tactic here. Indeed, indeed. And I mean, Pretty much, you know, it, it, it. from my experience of casting, it seems like offensive rounds are usually the most favorable uh, when coming into uh, 
St. Marie S and D because uh, I mean yesterday aspiration were just left and right on St. Marie, um, pretty much just left and right on St. Uh, St. Marie offensive. They, they weren't really getting any defensive rounds on their side. And we do have messy spawns here. I really don't know r what the issue fully is. I mean I think we're gonna get a shark just needs to switch up teams. Nope. There we go. It looks like everybody should be good. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, we may be good. The scoreboard is going to be a little odd. I'm going to go ahead and turn that around, get that fixed up for you guys. I mean, if I'm up slay, like I said, you want to you wanna channel the momentum, cut it down, and you want to go right back at aspiration. You really do not want anything bad, uh, you know, going down maybe a 6-0 or 6-1. You've got to change the momentum. You've got to reset yourself and maybe even play conservative because from my experience with Aspiration, it seems like they're preferring to play, uh, you know, more of an aggressive play style. They're not really, you know, playing back. They're not really playing, you know, scared. They're just rushing at you constantly with SMGs, ARs, and they're shutting you down. So, I mean... Nothing really coming Perfect. out of it. Absolutely, absolutely. They definitely, uh, on this side of a uh, play, they most certainly need to take, I'd say, at least two of the first three rounds to kind of get that momentum and start to rack up those rounds, start to maybe try to get that momentum that you can carry through these maps because momentum is a huge, huge thing in these matchups. If one team gets the momentum and they're not stopping at all, extremely swift series. But should be interesting here to see if Upslay can can map and tie up the series or aspiration. There's series lead out to two and zero. Oh. Indeed, indeed, and uh, of course we do have some mic issues. It's really not on our end, but scoreboard's fixed up. Everything's set to go. Teams are setting up and spawned in off the rip. I do want to start out with Sin. Because uh, from my research, it seems like he is a big deal with the S and D part of Upslay. All right, I guess Penguin, uh, his mic has unfortunately dropped. We'll get that reset though. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take over with this first round off the rip. We do see a sniper coming out of Sin. I love that personally. If you are running a sniper, I'm going to put it, you in the highlight spot. You're going in the spotlight. Let's see if anybody from Aspiration does decide to go mid. I don't think that will be their play because when they play B, they go together. So far, Aaron able to spot one. Survivor trying to get some shots in another player. Not going to happen. Hyper is able to find Vasey, but that will just like that. Three players do fall. Sin is last alive, and he unfortunately does have the sniper. Not really the weapon you want in a 1v3 situation. See what he can try to pull off here as he goes toward this street side. Is going to spot surging, not going to be able to clear him up. And aspiration just like that. One to nothing. Very, very easy. Pretty simple. That was an extremely, extremely clean round from them. Got the kills that they needed as they ran into that bomb site. Got the setup on all of the players for Upslay. Indeed, Didn't indeed, wait, um, and off the rip, I'm going to stay on board with Aspiration. Penguin, I'll let you have this round. Go ahead, buddy. So, on with Persergic. On a three-streak, he is right now 350 towards those streaks. That can be absolutely crucial, and he's just running straight up the map. I think Survivor called him out there, though. He might get some good timing. Does pick up one. On a shark. Can't quite do it. Does get shut down, but... Another kill actually goes on to Vasey, so now 3v2 man advantage as we're on with Insult going for this long flank, and Shark shuts down Aaron, so Insult in the 1v3, just like that. Uh, position there for Zeus last round, and now Insult in a 1v3 of his own, see if he can clutch this one up, gets good positioning onto Survivor. Maybe on these players, can't quite do it. Just like that, Upslay, take back a round into their favor and now tie up the game. Indeed, indeed, and uh, that round, like I said, man, I mean, Aspiration, it's really the offensive side that is favorable to them. Nobody can really shut down their offensive setups unless, you know, you, you kind of play conservative, let the bomb tick a little bit, you know, not too much, just enough 
know that it, it causes some some rift in between and they can hopefully weed out each player but off the rip i'm gonna pick it up here with shark currently sitting on something uh, very important to very important to notice is that no streaks do come in for the side of aspiration very very important that they do shut those down oh it's shark does have yeah, he's to in a good position he's gonna here. be able to find two Surgic and Insult, they are going to back up. I don't think they're going to be able to spot each other out. Surgic left in a 1v4 situation, is going to spot Shark, gets a few shots down, is not going to clean up that kill, though. Very unfortunate timing, indeed. Is going to try to peek out this middle, is going to spot Survivor, try to shoot some shots through the wall. Nothing getting it done, though, is just going to wait this time out. He is on the offensive side, so he has to make a push. 45 seconds. I mean, if he gets this done, Pang, uh, Pangan, uh, in which, as I say that, he falls. But if he got that done, I mean, what do you do if you're up slay? The seams. I it? mean, at that point, if you get 1v4 with 40 seconds left, that might just be the morale crusher that you can't afford to have for up slay. But if we can stay on with Shark here as we move into this next round, something very important to notice, I'm not sure if you picked up on it during that round, but on a five streak, if I'm not mistaken, yep, there it is. So Shark, on a five streak, working towards those streaks is gonna be very, very crucial. Moving in this round, if you can pick those up, those can be an absolute game changer. Indeed, indeed, because I mean, pretty much, if you get a glide bomb or a toy barrage or even a fighter pilot, and you're not running mountain, I mean, you're getting seen. And oh, Shark isn't gonna spot base, he's gonna try to shoot some shots, nades that off. If he can get that, he's not gonna be able to clean it up. Does back off to save himself some streaks. Zeus able to find one with the sniper. Gonna move around here on to with him. They are gonna get the bomb down. Nades do come in. A smoke by Aaron that does give them a little bit of an advantage to try to get in here. But one player is spotted. 1v4 for my man Surgic. Gonna try to win this gunfight has a tough time not going to be able to get it done 3-1 in favor of team upslay like i said banging i mean if i'm upslay change of momentum and right now it looks like they're pulling that off for this match i said they have to win i said two out of those uh first three rounds that's exactly what they did they lost the first round and now three rounds in a row that's definitely a good uh momentum switch into their favor i'm not uh Actually, I can't actually see at this point, but did he end up picking up those streaks? Uh, no, he is uh, one off of the streak. He does have a six kill streak, 600 toward those, and he will be ch uh, pushing into this B side, and Aspiration already getting there, getting their nades over, but they're not going to push. He wants to try to play back, at least save these streaks. He does see the nades. Now going to push in, is going to spot Surgic. Trades coming in. Not going to be able to get any shots down. Is going to back up and probably re-challenge. Hyper able to spot Vasey. Is going to decide to push back here. 2v2 situation, Penguin. And I mean, Aspiration looking pretty healthy this round. And hopefully for them, they can take this round back into their favor. Because if they don't, and uh, Upslate go up 4-1, that might just be uh, the nail in the coffin for this match. If they can get a round back in their favor and kind of shut down this momentum for Upslate and not let them get any more rounds in a row, that would be huge. Absolutely, and I mean, as we're on board here with Shark sitting in a 1v2, I'm pretty confident he will try to play these streaks. Uh, he might get the timing on Insult, but of course Insult is hidden. He does not have x-ray. We do. He is going to push out, probably get killed, gets cleaned up. Aspiration, take a round off of Upslay. 2-3 is your score. Shark, I mean... Insult, able to take out that kill, I mean, that person on Shark, and I mean, if you don't stop that player, he gets the glide bomb, may die out, but I mean, still, that's a big, big kill and big, big streak. I mean, it could change the momentum of this game entirely. Absolutely, absolutely, and not only do they kill that player off of his streaks, but they get the round win as well. So that uh, went as good as possible as it could have for Aspiration as they shut down that player off of streaks. And get a round back in their favor and shut down that, uh, that was in favor of Upla Upslay. Indeed, indeed. And you see Survivor off of Aaron's POV is on that top grandma's area. A nade kill does come in from Insult. That will be big to shift the man advantage in favor of Aspiration. Smoke coming in. That player will be spotted top grandma's. Aaron is going to try to shoot some shots. Survivor's just going to back down. 
Or no, he's gonna try to re-challenge. I thought for sure he would back down. He does have a sniper. Nothing coming out of it so far. A trade does come in favor of Zeus. He's gonna find that one player. He's gonna be able to find Aaron. It's all gonna trade that kill out. 2v2 situation. Gonna pick it up on board here with Survivor. Does have an M1 carbine. A very interesting choice of weapon. Is gonna find one and is gonna find two! Huge kills to shift the game round advantage in favor of Upslay. Huge round win. 4-2 is your scoreline. Very interesting so far. Nothing but Upslay pretty much throughout this game. Most certainly, as, lo as long as they can keep this momentum carrying into the other maps as well, they have a good chance of taking this series. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and give this round to you, Pengen. We're on board with Survivor. Go ahead and take it away, brother. Stay on for now because I'm not actually in the game anymore. Just uh, continue oh. on with Okay, what well, technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and just take over for this map. Of course, Pengen will provide analytics for the time being, but on board here with Survivor. Sinzu's able to find at least one kill. Is going to spot Surgic. Try to shoot some shots. Nothing coming out of it. Is going to find... Surgic eventually basically able to get two huge kills. Makes the man advantage 2v2. Hyper calling in. His glide bomb is going to be able to get Aaron. 1v1. Is going to spot Vasey. Shoot some shots. Isn't going to be able to get anything done. Just shooting back at each other. Hyper is going to jump out through that fr front sandbags area. Vasey needs to win this round. At least pull some momentum in favor of Aspiration. Of course... So far, this has been nothing but Upslay's game. Of course, two rounds are to Aspiration, but those are two key rounds where they caught them off guard. Could very well be a 6-0 if it wasn't for the fact that they did catch them through the first round with a very good offensive push. Basie does have bomb down on A. He will begin planting. Hyper expecting a B push. Bomb should be down any second now. There it is. Basie is going to spot this player. Able to get away with his life. Does have a sniper. Let's have it seems what to be an overkill class. I don't think that's on purpose. I think he picked up the sniper. Ooh, Hyper gonna try to get a quick kill on him. He's just gonna look back and forth. Is gonna run away. Vasey gonna get away with his life here. He's gonna run toward the mid street. Just running out and buying time for himself. Long as he can stay alive. It can be a huge factor. He is gonna spot Hyper. And just play back. Hyper hopping the bomb though. He is on it. Maybe he can get the defuse. Vasey isn't going to push in time. I don't know if he's going to be able to get it. He's going to be hearing him, though. He's going to turn around. Not going to be able to clean up the kill. And Aspiration take a round away from Upslay to make the round count 4-3. to three. So far, very interesting plays to say. That's a least. huge round because that's a, an, a massive swing round. If uh, Upslay do pick up that round and go up 5-2, to two, they put themselves one round away and put Aspiration in a position where they have to win four rounds and that's a huge round because not only do they pick up that uh, round win but they burn a streak on the other side definitely a very important uh thing that happened in that round absolutely Vasey currently sitting on a three streak is three and six did start out oh and six but able to pick up three huge kills to clutch up for his team and win that last round 450 to those streaks he's going to be playing this top red and it seems like upslade trying to make a slow b push so far, Aspiration just going to go ahead and shift it toward the A side, A and mid street side. Upslay are going to set up. Vasey does spot the players. Arc is going to nade over to Bomb. Is going to be able to pick up that kill. Aaron needs right after. Is going to be spotted by Shark. Is going to be taken out through the wall bang. Aaron is going to get picked off by Zeus. Insult able to win that one. Surgic in a 1v2 situation is going to try to kill one. He is going to be able to find one. Is in a 1v1 situation. Is going to get some shots into Shark. Going to stun. Very important. He is going to know that player is there. Bomb is going down. Shark has to play this absolutely perfect. But if Surgic's able to win this, it could shift the momentum in favor of Aspiration. Oh, but the timing. But Surgic doesn't have any mountain. He could get spotted here, and he probably will. Oh, no, but Surgic is going to turn. Not going to be able to clean it up. I thought almost Surgic was going to turn on him. But Upslay able to clean up that round and get themselves to game match point. 5-3, Team Upslay. Absolutely. I think if uh, in that situation, if Surgic does pick up that last kill on a Shark and does end up winning that round, 
I think Aspiration wins this map 6-4. to four. If they get those rounds back-to-back -back in two 1v1 situations that they end up winning, that momentum is absolutely going to switch in their favor. But now, one round away is up slay. I'm going to get it on board here with Shark. Currently sitting on a 3-streak, 450 to those streaks. And it looks like Aspiration making an A play. I'm pretty sure Upslay has already read this. Bomb should be going down very momentarily. Hyper is going to nade though and is going to be able to take that. That bomb plants her off. Zeus able to find a snipe. Insult does get a trade to make it a 3v2. Survivor does spot that player top. Grandma that is Vasey, but Vasey's going to rotate through the back. Insult is going to meet up with him. They are going to try to use their numbers that they can against Upslay. Upslay very separated indeed so far. Very divided. Aspiration. Was, power of those names, if you can save those, they can result in some big kills for your team and put that man advantage in your favor. Exactly, exactly. All Aspiration needs to do is get at least a trade. They are playing time to their advantage. There is one player top red. Vasey is going to get engaged by Shark. Insult is going to go ahead and try to push this player out. He's going to be able to spot him and take him out. 2v2. Vasey is going to try to snipe that player. Top red beams him off to make it a 1v2. Survivor does have the time. Oh, but Vasey, I think, spots him. Oh, no, he doesn't. Vasey is not going to spot that player, but the bomb is down, and they are going to go ahead and rotate through this green side. They are going to play their man advantage. Vasey will get spotted 1v1. Insult has to try to play the best that he can. Insult is going to get spotted out. He is going to run back and try to play. The time is going to go ahead and push up. Bomb is being defused. I don't think Insult knows, though. Insult is going to get out in time, and... Survivor gonna try to win that one, not gonna be able to. Has some shaky shots and aspiration. Has a nail biter there, but they're able to keep it alive. Four to five in favor of Team Upslay. And that's a huge uh, clutch in their favor. That's a 2v4 if I'm not mistaken, as they do take that back in their favor. Could potentially spell disaster for Upslay here as we move into this next round, but if uh, aspiration can claw their way back into this game. Absolutely, Insult on a three kill streak did get his bomb plant, so he does have 450 to those streaks. If he can get this glide bomb within this round, it would be very big. Oh, but it seems like Team Upslay are going to make an A push, and Aspiration are there to read it. They're set up for it. Basie able to take out Survivor. Insult on a little bit of a left side flank. He is going to stun that player, is going to spot him out, takes him out. He's going to take a second player out. 1v3 situation for Hyper. Hyper going to go ahead and rotate back, but I'm pretty sure Aspiration does know that he is back here. He is going to be able to get timing and get away with his life. Unless he takes his time here, he's going to turn around and spot Insult. Able to take that player out, makes it a 2v1. But Aspiration have him pretty much trapped inside of this upstairs area. Hyper in a very tough situation, needs to win one, but the trade is there. Let's see what he can try to do. Very interesting. Is going to slow it down. Going to try to win this gunfight. Not going to be able to do it. Aspiration take it to round 11. Very clutch plays by Aspiration. Conservative play. Reading the plays correctly. They're doing about everything they need to do here. Penguin. As you said, this could spell disaster for Upslay. As you had said earlier, they looked dominant on this map in the beginning. But Aspirations began to get those rounds in their favor. And here we find ourselves in round 11. So, so, take it away. Basie on a two kill streak. No kill streaks really across any any players. I don't know for sure. Doesn't look like Upslay have any. I'm pretty confident that Aspiration doesn't. No, they don't. They decide to make a middle push. If they can catch this team on the B play, which they do. Basie is going to spot that player. Nades him out. Not going to be able to clean him up, though. Is going to get naded and stunned. He does, fortunately enough, have armored on. Aspiration knows that this team is here. I'm going to pick it up on board here with Insult. He is on a bit of a flank. Is going to spot this one player. Shark isn't going to spot him, though. He's going to take some shots. Surgic is going to be able to clean that up. Survivor able to get a trade. Not going to be able to pick anything else up, though. 2v3 situation for Upslay. I'm going to pick it up on board here with Zeus. It does have the sniper. Is going to get an unfortunate hit marker. Not going to be able to clean up that kill. Is going to try to shoot some shots. Hyper is able to find one 1v2 situation for Hyper. As Aaron takes out Sin, and here they come. Aaron is going to get spotted in, and Surgic cleans it up. Aspiration, take your second map round 11 to take the series 2 to nothing. 
That was a close one, Penguin. Very close. Uh, absolutely. I mean, that's really as, as close as it uh, can get there, as the trades do kind of come in there. Uh, I mean, what do you think has to come in for the side of upside for them to come back into the series? Because at this point, not looking extremely promising as they are down two maps, but... Well, yesterday, Aspiration, they could try to use their own tactics against them. Aspiration really had two key players in that yesterday's match of their reverse sweep. As soon as it came into the CTF, Basie and Aaron played two big, humongous factors in the reason they won that overtime matchup. So if uh, I'm up Slay, I need to try to have two big, key players in this next matchup to try to change things up and change the momentum. Absolutely. You need one of those players on that team to step up. Maybe you look to the captain of the team. Maybe it's to someone else that doesn't typically take on that role, but somebody for that team needs to step up, needs to help everybody regain, get the right mentality as we move into this next uh, capture the flag map. It will be on Arden's Forest. So again, looking to the ARs on both teams to have incredible performances so far. The ARs for Aspiration played incredibly well in both uh, that first London Docks map and in that Search and Destroy. You need to see uh, the ARs for uh, Team Upsley step it up and make big plays moving into this next map. Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick intermission going into map three. Please, don't go anywhere. We got a great one. Aspiration currently up two to nothing.
call short there in that second map. But we're looking to them here to step up some big performances we're looking for out of their AR players, starting off with one of them here in Shark. He's gonna run Push towards this wood right wall. He is going to find Aaron here, possibly. Aaron does pick up a kill on the Zeus, however. Hyper gets two, actually. Hyper does get two. Actually, real quick, because he is going to be in another gunfight here. This could be his third kill. Doesn't, however, get it. Does get shut down. As well, and Zeus now up all alone. Shark does, however, spawn up behind him in that back bridge. This side is typically the preferred side for the CTF map here because you can definitely force yourself to spawn in that backside play some great defense up so looking to push out but the players from aspiration just not letting that happen just sitting at these power positions and Aaron picks up two yeah, going in favor much. of the players on uh on Upsla. yeah pretty much Aaron starting off on a hot six and oh kill streak I mean I, I don't know if that really gives him any streaks of course the closest is 700 I mean but aspiration pretty much just you know, starting off pretty hot. As I say that, two players do fall, but they are already set up toward this middle area. Hyper should get spotted very shortly. Is going to get cleaned up by Vasey. Uh, the upslate team pushing toward this snow side. One player is going to get picked out. Last, they get the trade, and he's probably going to pull this flag here. I expect Zeus to pull this flag. He is going to get killed off here by Persurgic, though, and fire. See if he can get the kill. And he can't, can't do it. it Persurgic up. does trade it out. Huge kill out of Persurgic. There is one player that is going to get the, the flag from the Upslay base. He's not going to go anywhere, though. Upslay able to at least stop a flag cap or flag pull at all. And now, map is really reset here. Push. But Upslay really starting to take some map control here. Barely out of that power position. Zeus can't quite pick up a second kill there, but Shark here. Hyper and Shark, both two players alive here. Shark really needs to pick this up, most certainly. I mean, that AR player for his team currently sitting at 1-3. and three. If he starts to do good, this could start uh, to really sway in favor of Upslay. Absolutely. Snap the AR play subject. is really, you know, the main factor of Ardennes Force because look at this long-range area right here. From wood to bunker, nothing but open field. I mean, if, if I'm an AR player, I have to be going off on the head glitches there. I can't be losing my gunfights. I can maybe lose one or two and have the second player at least get my trade and, and hold it for just a short time. Sinzu is able to at least get one and tries to get two more. Not going to be able to clean those kills up. Survivor and Shark. Shark is in the back of his base. Does spot insult, of course. His teammates do spawn up behind him here. But two more kills go in favor of Aspiration, just like that though, however, they trade it. Two huge kills. They're looking to get out of their base, they do get another kill. However, Persurgic here, sitting on this wall, does get some bad timing here. Shark does see him start to run away there. Yeah, I mean, Shark, he's, it seems like he's got a sub in hand. Of course, his main gun is the AR. He did not, you know, switch class, but it, I mean... If I'm Shark and I'm playing better with a sub, why not call one of my teammates to just pull an AR, you know? Why don't I start getting comfortable with the sub? He is going to get the flag pull. Going to try to get away with this. Sinzu is able to uh, be able to find one. No players for Aspiration really able to cut it off. This could be a cap. Unless number four. This is insane. Told. Zeus just picked up a three-piece in the base on a six streak. And, and as we talk that. about that, Insult shuts down the flag cap. He does die, unfortunately. And another flag pull, of course, made by Sinzus. No aspiration well, player was really able to stop it down. For insult. If insult does not get that return, this game is 2-0, and it's starting to get scarier and scarier hey! for this team. And of course, as we're talking, Sinzus able to at least get three big kills and get the streaks off of the flag cap. And of course, you know, change something up for his team here. I mean... If I'm Upslay, I have the favor, I have the momentum, do not let it turn. But switching over to Aspiration here, the big key factor, of course, being Aaron, currently sitting on a four kill streak, Surgic at two and nine. He is going to be able to get away with his life in this flagpole. Nades do come in, but unless one player from Upslay gets into this mid area, there is an artillery brush being called in. Surgic trying to get away, not going to be able to get anything done. This could smell a disaster. 
desperation, at least trying to win mm -hmm. their gunfights. They can try to get this return. If he can just kill a hit, Aaron and Persurgic here, or at least one of them die for that flag return, that's going to be huge. These players are going to start running towards this flag, but... The extra time is added. Oh, Surgic going to try to get a flag pull here. He is going to be able to pick up that flag. He is going to get taken out. But nobody from Upslay, but one player, Survivor, going to try to at least get back. He's not going to be able to. 1-1, one, one, final round of flag cap final second flag cap that is an aspiration tie up the map one to one i mean whose favor is this really in hang on i mean absolutely an aspiration just, i mean i mean upslay, upslay had the game absolutely in their hands but the incredible place coming out for aspiration is they do stop that flag cap last minute and now aspiration moves on to this preferred side and you know players like presurgic they're not going to do p poorly in these maps Sitting at 2-11, and 11. if he starts to turn up and he starts to get kills, he's an AR player on this map. If he gets those kills, this is going to get out of hand very, very quickly for Upslay. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, the only thing Upslay has to answer back with that, if that does happen, is Sin Zeus. He does still have a fighter pilot and a glide bomb in store. And as we're talking, of course, Vasey able to get a flag pull. Sin Zeus, the only player there to try to at least spot him out, does spot him and call him to his team. He is the only player left alive. He's going to get cleaned up. And there you go. I mean, v Surgic already getting two kills off the rip to go 4 and 11. Aspiration get pretty much a quick 40 second cap right off the start. Insult sitting on a three kill streak. Surgic on a two he is getting some shots. And actually, Vasey's one away from his streaks. If he can get this kill and he does, gets the glide bomb. If there's more streaks coming out for Aspiration, this game is absolutely oh. all but over, but... Sinzu is able to at least get two kills. Insult, oh my goodness, Insult, trying to run away the flag here, is going to get naded. This should oh, clear yeah. him up, and there you go. I thought Insult was going to pull something absolutely crazy out of the hat, but he does get shut down. Vasey does, fortunately enough, have a glide bomb, does take out that one player. Oh, and we see Sinzu is going to call in these streaks here. He is able to take out at least one player. Tries to get that second, not going to get it done, though. <laughs> Yeah, the real reason he called that in is because he's working towards the second set of them. He's 125 away from this glide bomb yet again, hoping to maybe get some map control with that uh, streak usage there. Absolutely, and I, I mean, I, I could see a glide bomb call coming in very shortly to at least call out the team and at least get an idea. If Upslay gets a pull here, gets a flag cap, this, uh, this, this could go right back into favor on their side. I mean... They're not really playing too bad. They have map control. Shark able to get two. Does get a flag pull. His teammate gets the trade. Basie Turk actually alive. gets three there. He's out. He's out. The glide bomb is going to kill him there. But he, I, I think he's most certainly gone with that flag cap. Pretty Somebody's going to grab mean, it. They pretty much need to get these kills. Get down to middle map. There is one player that is Vasey. He's not even going to try to get this. It's a flag cap. Upslay at least tie up the game. But Aspiration, they're right back on that tear. Vasey's going to get taken out. There's only two players left alive in Aaron and Presurgic, both the ARs of this team. One kill does go down in favor of Aspiration. They need to try to hold this team off so they can at least get their teammates spawned up, which they do. Full team spawned up. Here comes the push. Two players for Upslay on this right side. Two players, three players fall for Aspiration. And there goes the fourth, and Upslay able to defend their base. And Hyper already in the base of Aspiration. He's gonna wait out this this is huge because Zeus, uh, we weren't on him at the time, but he does actually end up getting shut down there and he doesn't end up picking streaks up. So he does actually burn them all for that uh, second flag cap. The good thing is they did get the flag cap. That does uh, come out of it. However, doesn't get any extra streaks. Shark really their only hope to pick up any streaks here. Exactly, exactly. He's really the one, him and uh, Senzus. I mean, they're, they're two big factors so far, Shark. Oh. As we're talking, he falls, unfortunately. Aspiration able to clear up three. Aaron is getting a huge three-piece. I mean, 1v1, Survivor, and Aaron. Aaron trying to at least hold off the base. The Upslay team already spawning up and rotating through to try to help his teammate here. Hyper is going to get spotted and taken out. Survivor is going to be able to peek, though. One player left alive, and Surgic cleans him right up. And, I mean, man, I thought Surgic was starting out pretty hot, but, I mean, 6 and 17. You gotta change something up here if I'm certain. This is incredible. It, for Persurgic to not uh, do well at all, I think something has to change here for him. Either he has to pull out a sub or do something. On this map, typically, yes, you'd like to see two ARs, but on a search or a capture the flag, rather, it's it's possible to make a 
RNG setup work, and I think that's kind of what he might just have to do. But just like that, three players go down for aspiration, and Aaron's left up all alone. But just like that, picks up a multi kill. So good defense yeah, from him. Exactly, and uh, Aaron already in this base tries to get something going. Surgic is the last alive, is going to be able to shut down that last player for Upslay, return the flag. We could be seeing overtime here, uh, Penguin. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Surprise me either. A lot of back and forth trades going down. A few flag pulls from either side, but if Presurgic starts to do much, much better as we move maybe to the end of this half, but most certainly in overtime, this game I think will go into favor of Aspiration. I mean, my nearly sitting double positive, um, positive 12 right now. Oh, and as we're talking, Insult does get a flag pull. He at least tries to run with it and is gonna fall. And uh, while we were talking there, I, I I sift over Shark, and he does have a glide bomb in store. And going into overtime, that glide bomb could cost Aspiration very, very dearly. We talked about the AR performances on the side of uh, Upsla to kind of get them into the series, but. Zeus, with the SMG, absolutely takes over the map. Really, it looks like a battle between him and Eren, almost sitting identically stats-wise. Full cool amount of uh, engagements for both of those players, <laughs> yeah. and a, lo a lot of wins for both of them. Yeah, man, for 100% uh, sure, but Sin Zeus really the main factor for this Upslay team, as well as Shark. Nothing but positive for Upslay, except for Hyper, who's only negative by two. I talked about Hyper, he is going to get dropped. Aaron able to find at least one more kill along with Insult that does get two players down for Upslay. And oh my goodness! God, Zin no. Zeus. Zeus. Absolutely we talked about how hard we were playing. Up until that point, evidently. And four, and four down. And that's pretty much a flat cap. We're talking about Zeus. Zeus has to play the overextension here and he's not going to play it. He's going to go back for that kill. I don't know if he's going to get there in time. And he's not going to read that the well. cut off perfectly. And this is pretty much Basie. a flag cap within at least around 50 Four seconds. Here. This is huge. I mean, if this I, pretty if much is done deal. In that situation, if I were Vasey, I'd just kill Presurgic just to get my streaks because I would be at that point one kill away. However, may not need it here as they're going to be, what, 30 seconds on the clock here for Upsla to get a cap in. So 50 seconds. They have some time, but they're not on the preferred side. And Aspiration looks like they're just going to turtle in their base. This could come back to bite them. However, all the angles covered. Doesn't look like they're going to go down in this map. Of course, you know, most teams really don't favor the turtle. And uh, as we're talking, that kill streak does come in. Is going to be able to find one, but there's only two players left alive. But it makes it a 2v2. And if I'm Upslay, I need to at least try to get this. And I mean, this is the last chance. Shark has to make a push here. He's only got 18 seconds. Has to at least get the pull. He is going to get taken out. Time. And there Just like you that, the go. Game's done. The game is pretty much over. Aspiration with a very simple 3-0. And I mean, just to end it off, I mean, what, what, what do I do if I'm Upslay from this point forward? Upslay, very. I think they had a very good mentality going into this. I don't think they gave up in, on this map at all, as they did end up actually tying that series up. Got a flag cap on each side per half. I think for them, something you just kind of have to think about is where do we go from here? Do do they need no, more practice? Do they need to maybe make a bit of a role change? Who knows? That's something that's going to come internally from those players. But I think they put up an incredible fight against this team. We knew Aspiration was good coming into it. I mean, you can see there on the scoreboard, Aaron reflects uh, that prowess that you spoke of uh, earlier in this matchup. And I think it was a dominant performance from them, but nothing to uh, count Upslay out of. I mean, they played very, very well on the second map. Absolutely. And this third map. I think they did. So, I mean, with it, moving into the later games. If I'm up Slay, I just take this. I move on from it. I learn from my mistakes. I go over the VODs, and I come back stronger than before. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us. Off of the first map, uh, we should be getting some uh, in-depth interviews toward the end of the day instead of right after the match. Next up will be... X Telkis going on against Rejects at War. Make sure you guys stick around. Do not go anywhere.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am your caster, Z Shadow GG, joined by my man, Penguin, my duo for tonight. We have your second matchup against X Telkis and Rejects at War. X Telkis going to be the green team on your screen, and Rejects at War going to be the red team. So, this matchup, both of these teams were competitors in my past league that I did cast. Unfortunately, X Telkis took third into that position, but Rejects at War splitting two of their players off and becoming their own squad. It's going to be a very interesting matchup to say the least. Storylines across the board. But, Penguin, I mean, if you want me to be honest, you know, with the research done in these two teams and the history behind them that, you know, two players from Extelkis moving over to Rejects at War, I mean, the storylines are just there, man. Am I right? Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure both of these uh, teams have agreed that the moves have bettered them both as teams, but nonetheless, there's still going to be a little bad blood there. Maybe we'll see a little bit of a extra loving, you know, as we move into these maps, but should be interesting to see which team does come out on top. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. Of course, the past X Telcus team, pretty dominating, pretty, uh, pretty well respawn rounded team. They took it to Aspiration multiple times in Game 5s, even taking a, a series off of them before throughout the league or throughout scrims. Very interesting, to say the least. We'll be getting your matchup started here very shortly. I have put the Aspiration Upslay matchup 3 to nothing up onto your intermission screen. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, very interesting indeed. I will get the scoreboards updated right away. Off the rip. I'm going to let Pangan go ahead and take this away to start us off. Going on board here with Extelkis Python. And here, Python is using a sub airborne. Probably we're going to see him just sprint right up that mid lane, try to get as much uh, map control. And we've touched on this previously. Heading into previous series, we need to see the ARs from both sides really step it up. However, an SMG can take over this map if your SMG players are playing extremely well and doing everything that they need to do a lot, a lot easier. So, Python sitting at this mid tank. Actually, Reverse is looking to push towards this hill. Does, however, get shut down. Python can't pick up a kill. And just like that, all the kills really go in favor of um, Rejects. They're not, uh, not quite what you want to see from them, but here they go. Trying to break through this bunker side. I mean, Jacket picks up to uh, go ahead and see uh, how they're doing over there. Yeah, man, I mean, to go off the board with Extelkis so far, Rejects at War doing nothing but slaying this team out. But as we were talking, Extelkis instantly come back and clear out Python. He's a huge factor, and so is Gunny. These two players go at it constantly with KDs. As I'm talking, Extelkis currently on a four kill streak. I'm sorry, I meant to say Python. His name Python. is Extelkis Python. <laughs> my dear, st uh, my bad, my, my bad. I read that, I read the team name, but Python does get cleaned up. Unfortunately, Rejects at War are set up for this next hill. But as I talk, you know, two it's players go down. Mid. Instantly, you know, Rejects, oh, but they turn it right back around and able to pick up at least two. If I'm Extelkis, I need to break this hill. There is one player left alive for Rejects and he goes huge. Stop Extelkis from breaking through. Reject currently on a two or three kill streak. My bad. Very interesting score. They don't can pick up these streaks. That would be huge. If he picks up these streaks moving into these next up. My I'm not and sure how he lost he that got one, but... guns. I mean, we You were spotlighted, man. You gotta at least hey, go on. That just shows the power of the bar. A lot of players have complained in the past about the bar. That shows. Bar's I mean, Fatal was literally creating the dominant the gun. It's a dominant gun. Hit fired by the bar. It absolutely can be, yeah. And uh, Rejects trying to get to this back, but Reverse goes off and gets a huge three piece. Can he try to get the four? He is not going to be able to, but oh my goodness, he shuts down the back spawns. But instantly, two players from Rejects oh, are able to though. get that. They are able to get I mean, Gunny now still running through that. Uh, does. There, but 
time being contested, however. Still being contested. Typically, this is a hill you'll see one team set up and uh, get a significant amount of time on, but this has been a lot scrappier than it uh, typically tends to be. Exactly. Weavers looking to Usually pick up some more is space. Usually, one able to hold down there. this hill. I mean, you, you get spawns, and that's pretty much the go-to. No real worries either way, but Hydra, Hydra picks up a third a three piece of his own. Absolutely. I mean, oh, and Reverse able to absolutely gun ticket or tack it, whatever the name should be. Either one is on timing it on, on reverse. And the kill. Reverse out, gets shut down there. That's a huge kill on him as he was building towards their streaks. But what? Hydra now has his own opportunity to do so. Yeah, man, if, I mean, if Hydra was able to get these streaks, it could cost ex or, uh, raw, rejects at war very dearly is going to spot one player and get turned on? I, I, I don't know what I, That was, was just, doing. I think, a bit of a visual glitch there as but we see the back of that player's head as he dies. But <laughs> We see Tackett do pretty much a 360, what it looks like on our screen, but I, I think that was just a visual glitch. He is going to take out Hydra and stop their streaks, but reverse right back on a two-kill streak. He could get these streaks very close hard points so far. Rejects able to clear out at least three players. Oh, the X-Talc is spawning them out. Python going to push this left side. Is going to run into this player. Going to try to win this jump fight. Not going to be able to clear it up. I mean, so far, looking at the stat line of x is pretty much positive except for two players. One negative and one negative by six. If I'm Gunny, like I was bragging earlier, you know, he's a big factor for this x squad. But right now, he's just getting shut down. I mean, you got to change something up, man. Couple, a little bit of technical difficulties. I'm gonna go ahead and take on over. Picking it up with Extelkis. Drail tries to at least get two. Not gonna be able to clear that up. His teammate Gunny will be able to get a kill. He gets traded out. Python trading that kill out. Tackett getting one on reverse. Hydrail will go through the mid. He's gonna see Afro. Able to take Afro out. Is gonna get naded. Spots reject. Able to take him out. Got Hydro and Gunny win their respective gunfights. Hydro trying to go off for his team. Gunny in the hill, holding the time for Extelkis. 20 seconds left. The rest of Cave will go in favor of Extelkis. Of course, they will grab the rest of this time, putting them in the lead by just a small amount. Rejects at war, looking to get this rotation. Trying to get some free fires, and Reject gets a team kill. Or gets team kill by uh, Moger. And Moger drops along with Afro. Unfortunately, that opens up the base for Extelkis. Tackett able to at least win two. So is Reject Python clutching up, though. He is going to be able to take out one player, two player, and then he does fall. Unfortunately, Gunny able to at least pick off Bear. Afro able to get that kill on Hydrail. They're currently sitting on a three kill streak. Does not spot that player in the back. He could be shot in the back here. Is not going to escape with his life. Bear will get the rest of this ruins time as it seems Extelkis are going to go ahead and rotate. The player was caught off guard there. And Extelkis, they are spawning out. You can see across onto your top right side of your mini map. They are going to spawn toward this ice side. They will not be able to come anywhere near. It seems like... Rejects are able to hold down the spawns, but there is one player for Extelkis that will fight that argument. That will be Python. He's trying to win his respective gunfight. Is going to be able to clear it up. One player up for the reject side, and Rejects still spawning really close. They are spawning toward that bell side. Afro able to get two huge kills. Is going to try to free fire and contest this time is going to be spotted through the little window, but his teammate is going to be able to clear that kill up. Gunny going to get free fired, but there is still one player in the hill for Telkis. He gets found. He gets taken out, and Rejects should have the rest of this bunker hill as they start to take a little bit more of a lead going into our third sec or second side hills. They do have about a 25-second lead. Reverse able to win a huge kill. Huge gunfights going down. Hydro able to beat Tackett. Afro is going to, of course, rotate. Reverse catches him. Is going to try to challenge this person in the back. Going to try to... 
wall bang, not gonna be able to get it. Extelkis are able to hold on. Two players for rejects do fall. Um, coming in, not gonna connect to anything. There are two players in the back of the base for Raw. One player able to get his streaks, that is Afro. Does have that artillery barrage. Did not see that, that will, could cost Extelkis ever so dearly later in the game. So far, ladies and gentlemen, this has just been a back and forth bout. It's whichever team can control and hold down the map better. Nothing really done for it specifically, and no big plays really out of either side besides some three pieces. But that's just to shut down and take the momentum back. Telkis looking to try to tie up the game. It is within four here going into your Ice Cave Hill. Afro currently laying down, is gonna get spotted and taken out by Gunny. Gunny gonna go ahead and rotate through with his AR, is gonna spot two players, tries to win the gunfight, not gonna get it done though. As reverse tries to beam that player off of the barrel heady. He is gonna come in and contest, does get his full streaks. That could cost rejects at war. Of course, they do have an artillery barrage of their own. But, oh my goodness, Reverse is instantly going to call in these streaks. He wants to try to run away with at least some time here. He is going to go clutch for his team. Sitting on a nine kill streak. He's just feeding on. He is the reason this team is able to take it away. They are going to take a pretty decent lead. Going into your top ruins side hill. Very interesting plays to say the least. He's going to grab the rest of this time. Does have the most kills, most time, and highest kill streak on his team. He is the huge factor for this Extelkis squad. As Gunny is trying to find two, is not going to be able to clean that up. His teammate, Reverse, does get spotted. Streak does end, but he's going to call in his fighter pilot. Let's see if he can try to get some kills. Is going to find Bear, try to connect something. Not going to be able to get anything, and that's huge. That's pretty much a wasted streak. I mean, you do get the information. Python does spot one player, but reverse. Look at that second. They need to try to break this hill here. So they can grab the momentum back in their favor. Reverse able to find two. Tries to get three, is gonna get taken out. Hydrail coming into the hill though, alongside Gunny. Gunny gonna try to make a huge play here and get Reject out of the hill to stop the time. Is gonna spot Afro, not gonna be able to clean that kill up. And the 10 seconds should go in favor of Rejects at war. This could tie it up here. Rejects trying to push this left side cave. So far we've had nothing but a close one, ladies and gentlemen. Extelkis are set up somewhat two players. And as I say that, they fall instantly. And Rejects take control of your Bunker Hill. So far, nothing but Rejects across the board for the time being. No streaks really in the pocket of any of these Rejects players. Reverse still does have his Glide Bomb. It could be huge if he's able to use it at the right time. Does get taken out though. Rejects pretty much holding off the Extelkis squad for most of this Bunker Hill. They cannot win off of it, but they can sure get close. That's so far what they are doing. Telkis are just gonna let them have the rest of this time. They're gonna try to clutch up. Should be within at least nine or eight points. And next hill is down, but no players for Telkis are in it yet. Finally, they get somebody in and Rejects already getting in and breaking inside. It, two players for Telkis do fall and this reverse players does look around one last player left alive is gonna try to clutch up he gets at least two but he's not gonna shut them down in time reverse has to call in the street he's gonna try to shut it down there's only one player near the hill that is python he has to win this gunfight is not gonna be able to hydro has to pretty much flood in and there you go rejects at war take your first map 250 to 203 very intense matchup off of the rip. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. Rejects at war. Take your 1-0 series lead. We will be right back with Map 2 S&D.
Hey guys, welcome to Monster Cat Call the Wild on Spotify. I don't know where to go I'm told I'll be All of what I saw These mistakes have no one else to blame
And we are right back, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, I did drop it in chat that my partner has unfortunately disconnected. I will be soloing the rest of this series, but it should be a good one indeed. Right now, we have x Telkus taking on Rejects at War. And pretty much nothing too tough for either side. I mean, Extelkis, pretty much falling that first map, not really able to get anything done whatsoever. He did, unfortunately, fall by over a stat line of 50. But, if I know Extelkis, they can definitely bring it back and revive themselves. Off the rip, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up here with my man. Pa Actually, you know what? We're going to go We're gonna go on with reverse. This man was having a blast. Also, he's sniping. He's sniping. You know, here at v &M, we love snipes, okay? We love them. I lo personally love them. Let's see if we can get a highlight reel out of them. Now, like I said yesterday, if we see a quad collat or even a collat or a triple collat, my headset's going out the window. It's out of the window. Reverse not really going to spot anything, though. 
unfortunately. Shots are going down. The bear is able to get a nade kill off of Python. And he's going to go ahead and stun this middle. Not going to catch bear in the correct time. Bomb will be grabbed. I think a rotation 2A will be in set motion. Gunny able to find a one trade. Bear right here in this middle area. Is going to try to spot the rotation. Doesn't see anything right now. There is one player that is fatal sitting toward this side. And he does spot that player. That is information to his team. They do now know that a, a push is ensuing. The rotations should be coming through. Attack it. Of course, does not have anything silent. Trades coming in. A snipe from reverse. Kill will be going down to make it a 1v2. Reverse is going to try to pick up. This player is going to spot him and nade him out. Not going to catch a nade, though. Does have to challenge. He only has 10 seconds. His teammate, this player, is going to run away. And rejects. Able to take the first round off of Extelkis to take the momentum into their favor, one to nothing. Rejects at war. Off the rip here, I'm gonna go on board with Bear. Ogar the Bear, currently two and one. Of course, was able to at least get the two first bloods for his team last round. Which played huge factors. Does have a gunfight going down as Tackett is able to spot out Hydrail and take him out. A sniper is still out for my man Reverse. And he might spot Tackett here. He's going to spot this player. Spots another one. Reverse should try to come in with some snipes. He's going to nade these players out. He's going to get hit markers, of course. Is going to try to snipe him. Is not going to be able to get it. And Mogar on the back is going to take out Python, making it a 2v4. Pretty comfortable situation for Rejects at War. Nothing really tough. A snipe does go down. Fatal peaks here. He could fall as well. If Extelkis can play this smart, they could definitely play, pull off something. Another player taken out to the one situation. Bomb is at four seconds. Rejects is going to win this one. They clear up that player to make it a two to nothing in favor of Rejects. And I mean, so far, it seems like Rejects comfortably in a good position. They're forcing Extelkis to make plays, make pushes. They have to just weed these players out, and that's so far what they are doing. I'm going to switch it over onto the side. Of Extelkis, reverse, still wanting to pull this sniper out, not changing his class. Let's see if anybody from Rejects decides to pull a sniper out on their side. They will not. They're going to keep the same things running. Bear is going to spot Gunny on a cross. Python able to take out Tackett. Afro able to get a trade on a Hydrail. Huge kills ensuing. Indeed. Python and Reverse trying to make a play here. Python might catch one player off guard that he fortunately did turn around. So that does cost him dearly. Does spot Afro. Is going to try. Nothing coming out of it. Python. At least spot this player. Oh, might get some timing here. Is going to reload and is it able to catch that player off? Reject left in 1v2. Fatal. Fortunately, this of course in the back, but the teammates are split up. He could catch this player off guard. He will. He could hop it, but of course, reverse with his sniper could get this player easily. Gonna Spot and run across this screen. Easy kill for my man Reverse to take a round off of Rejects at War. Make this game a 2-1 set. So far, Re Rejects really had control of it. If Fatal knew that player was there, he could have probably made a different play choice. Nothing really coming out of that one. A two kill streak for Reverse. He does decide to put the sniper away. 
Let's see if any other players have decided to pull one out. So far, I don't see one. It seems like we've got all regular guns across the board here. A push is ensuing from the boys at Extelkis. Reverse is going to play a smart little corner here. While Fatal tries to wait these players out. Tackett is going to catch that player off guard. After able to spot Python, Gunny does get a trade to make it a 2v3. Pick it up here with Hydrail and Gunny. They are really not near this bomb besides Hydrail. One player is going to be caught off guard in the back of spawn. Both rejects that war players are inside of this bottom 10 area. Both Gunny and Hydrail with bars in their respective classes. Hydro gonna make a push, look to this corner, is gonna spot that player, is gonna get taken out. He does get traded out though. One player left alive, that is Tackett, Tackett. Trying to play the time here, is gonna get spotted if he can get taken out. If the time, he can get it, and he does get the defuse. Extelkis able to play a close one and tie up the map two to two. Very good plays out of Extelkis. Nothing really tough coming out of it for him. Very interesting plays. Very conservative game so far. Interesting to see. Let's go ahead and get on board here with Gunny. Currently sitting on a four kill streak. Does have 550 onto those streaks. Only 150 off is going to spot Fatal. Gonna call that out to his team. Going to make a B push, but rejects at war right there. On to the setups. One player is going to spot Hydrail. Bear wins one against Reverse. Gunny still waiting for this player on the A side. Does not push though. They don't get anything out of it. They got to make something aggressive here. They're playing so conservative on the offensive side. They're just able to get to bomb fast enough and. Python almost taken off. Is able to escape with his life though. Fortunately enough. Hydro able to spot out Tackett. See what kind of goes down here. 3v3. One player is spotted mid. Another player is heard mid. Shots do go down. Python needs to get this bomb down, but there are two players from Rejects at War on this flank. Afro, if he just pushes in time, he could pull something out here. Bear able to win one against Hydro, able to win that one against Python. And Gunny left in a 1v3 situation, is able to win one mid. It tries to turn and burn this player. Not going to happen, though, as Rejects at War take out Extelkis to take their 3-2 round lead. So far, ladies and gentlemen, and really a back and forth S and D. The rejects looking to get this 2-0 map series lead. This will be your last matchup of the night. The first matchup, Aspiration Gaming taking on Team Upslay Aspiration with a quick and swift 3-0. Move on to 2-0 in the league. So far. Nothing really tough for them, but back on to this game. So far, conservative plays out of both teams. It does look like a B push, but the bomb carrier's all the way in the back of the map. He's on the back of the A side while his team is mostly at A. Or B. Sorry. Mix bombs. Happens a lot. It's confusing. I know. Attack it. Able to spot out Hydrail. Eject. Does have his teammates with him? Is gonna get naded. Almost gets killed off there. Bear able to get Python and Gunny trades that kill out 2v3 situation for the boys at Extelkis. Gunny trying to win one, not gonna be able to get it. Escapes with his life. Reverse tries to win one against Fatal, but Fatal guns out. Reverse Gunny in a 1v3 situation. Trying to get at least a kill, at least a pick to make something happen here. Trying to wait out a player. Nobody near him, though. 
on the x-rays Tackett pushes back 15 seconds left on this bomb nothing really he can do unless he pushes and gets an amazing three piece and Tackett spots him out gets the kill makes the lead four to two in favor of rejects at war pretty easy game so far as rejects at war look to run away with this one and make their map lead two to nothing to try to sweep up and get a 3-0 to end their night pretty much all but positive across the board except for afro who is even at four and four tack it on a two afro on a two and reject with one kill to his name Pretty much simple. I mean, Python is going to be able to spot out Afro. Tackett does get a trade out though on reverse. Tackett is going to get spotted and taken out by Python. Python able to at least get two huge kills on rejects at war. Bear able to trade out Hydrail. Fatal on a flank here. Trying to at least walk it toward this side to sneak up toward this player. Gunny patiently waiting out. Ejects at war team. These Telkus do have the bomb. Python and Gunny do link up, but the players of Reject at war do split up. Bear will spot these players and call it out to his teammate. And Fatal going to rotate through the mid. Bear could get an easy timing kill here. Well, as fatal because he's up behind Gunny, who is not play, paying too much attention. These players don't even know that that player's there. But oh, Bear falls off. But Gunny's not going to turn around in time, and rejects at war. Take a 5-2 lead. Take this one pretty much into sudden death for Extelkis. Match game point. Rejects at war. So far, nothing but subs for the rejects at Warside, and Bear did switch back to an AR. As STG is out for reverse, does not spot that player that does go mid, middle of 10. That is Afro. All Extelkis players playing toward the east side. Does not know the bomb is down A. Afro is going to spot Hydrail, able to rip him off. Bear taking out Gunny. Python is going to trade out Bear, fortunately enough, though. It's in reverse. Tries to win that one. Is able to clear that player up. Now, Telkus need to make a push here. If Python can spot this player out, he's not going to be able to. And both reject players get the last Extelkus players. And rejects at war take a 2-0 map series lead over Extelkus. So far... Nothing but rejects at war. Pretty simple series for them to say the least. I'm going to send it on over into intermission. Don't go anywhere. Game 3 CTF right on your way.
board here ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the venom league season four day two week one pool a action as we are set on a board here with Re rejects at war versus x telcus so far it's been nothing but rejects at war pretty easy series so far for them Taking both maps in very dominating fashion. Off the rip here though, we're gonna go on board with Reverse, who instantly falls off the rip. They are able to take out Gunny. A flag sh should be getting pulled here very shortly. Python able to at least win one. He gets taken out instantly as they're trying to funnel through to this Woodstack side. Hydro trying to do something, not gonna get anything done though. Flag. Good, almost get pulled for reverse, able to win two huge key gunfights, does get the return, gets the third, and shoots the body of Tackett. And Xtelkis pulling the flag, nobody in sight, should be a flag cap right off of the rip. And Xtelkis looking to take a 1-0 lead. Right out of the gate here within a minute, starting off of your CTF flag tower. Pretty easy stuff. Reverse currently sitting on a 4 in 1 stat line with 4 kills to his name. The flag was pulled but instantly returned a theme on Fatal there. Right now, Xtelkis looking pretty comfortable. They have map control, they are pretty set. 3 do fall. Last man up is Gunny in the base of Rejects, just waiting it out. Might do counter pull here, but Reject looking to get a push of their own. Shots do go down, reverse not able to finish out that kill. 
It does pick up the flag, does not run away with it though. One player left in, the, two or two players left in the base of the Duckus. One player is taken out. Next player is cleaned up. And Gunny already has some streaks. 125 to that artillery barrage. That will be huge for Extelkis if they're able to get that. He's gonna go ahead and try to turn on this player. Not gonna happen though. He does get killed off of those streaks. That's a huge kill, but still does have that glide bomb. It can impact the game oh so dearly. Reverse is on the back side of this player. He's gonna spot one, does spot the next player in the middle. Trying to re-challenge. Nate does come through. Doesn't connect at all though. Taka is gonna get eventually taken out by Gunny. Rejects kind of just huddling in their base. Only one push made and they were unsuccessful. Let's see if they can try to make another push here and try to at least get something going. Two players for Extelkis do fall. Gunny does use that glide bomb though. Is able to take out one player. Afro is in the base of Extelkis, he is gonna try to make a pull here, maybe. Extelkis is already set up in the rejects base. But, Afro could make a push here. Is gonna spot a reverse to get a kill. Every kill with this flag is huge. It does go toward those streaks. Does get three, already 150 off. Is gonna go ahead and run into the base, but remember, see that player on the top left of your map he could cost this flag cap but they do spot him he's gonna try to make some play here he does wait this kill out is not gonna be able to do anything and rejects at war instantly tie up the map one to one very simple afro is gonna call in this streak tries to get a kill is not gonna be able to clean it up though is already 75 off of that artillery barrage if he gets this it could cost extelkis all the momentum they have is gonna spot a player get some shots not gonna be able to clean it up though gonna go ahead and rotate back to try to reload is gonna be spotted of course by and messes up his nade will hurt himself if he can try to escape here he is gonna save his streaks though fortunately enough for the boys on rejects this does help him a lot he is gonna get the gunfight and get taken out the streaks are shut down but stuck is trying to make a push here Python does win a huge key gunfight. No rejects at war players left in the base. They are rotating back the ones that are left alive. Reject does have the Extelkis flag as well as Python has the rejects flag. He's stuck in the rejects of, at war base. Gonna try to make a Woodstacks push. Is gonna be able to swap one player out. Kills him. Does try to turn around and get two more. If he gets those, he for sure gets streaks, but not gonna be able to get anything done. And rejects. Instantly cap it right back in the final closing seconds of the first round to take a 2-1 lead off of Extelkis. Rejects looking to close this series out with a 3-0. Hydra running right past that player. Looks straight at him and just runs right past him. One kill does go down. Afro is killed in the closing seconds, but nothing really impactful. So far, Rejects aren't looking too hot off the rip, but Throughout the round, they regained map control and played a lot better as a team and were able to take two flags off of Extelkis. But Extelkis do have one going on to this gun side. Let's see what they try to do. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up on board here with the reverse, currently sitting at 11 and 6, and we see his. I really don't know what's going down. His gun is just disappeared. Podcasts are glitching out, unfortunately, but it does fix itself. Reverse able to find a one there. Does have a 12 and 6 stat line. Currently the only one positive on this team besides Gunny, who is even now positive. One player for rejects is on this minigun side. A streak is called in. He's not able to get any kills with it. Reverse gonna try to challenge Afro, not gonna get anything out of that though. One player is coming with stacks, that is Bear. And Reverse, last one alive, needs to go big for his team. He is gonna have some shaky shots. Gunny is able to pick that up, but no players left alive. And of course, they two players do spawn up. They do are able to shut down that flag carrier. One player for Rejects is gonna try to make a huge play here. He is still in the base. 
of Exitelkis that is bare is gonna get cleaned up unfortunately but it does buy his team some time to get a second push going Hydrel and attack it right across from each other he's able to win that against that player attack it trying to be a thorn in the side of Exitelkis nothing coming out of it though Fatal does have an artillery barrage and fighter pilot Jacks at war having to play more of a defensive play style this time as Extelkis look to try to make an offensive push to try to get a fly cap. Two players do fall. Three kill streak for a reverse. Afro able to trade out one though. And trades out two. Reverse not able to do anything. And the base is clear. Now Rejects at War looking to make the push of their own. As they are able to take out two players. Python waiting on this right side is going to get easily cleaned up though. Fatal able to clean up another. Reverse goes huge and gets at least two players. Redo fall. Tackett is the last one up in the base of Extelkis. He's going to try to at least play back and wait for his team. He does not have anything silent on. He does get that kill. Is going to try to pull the flag here. His teammate calls in his streaks. Gunny, the only one left in the base of Rejects, is going to try to go huge here. Tries to win a gunfight in mid. Player from the back is going to kill him. No players left alive. And Rejects at war take a 3-1 lead. Going into your third minute of the second round. Reject Fatal currently sitting on a five streak. Tries to keep his streak alive, is not going to be able to do it. Tackett on a three kill streak of his own. Only 150 off of that glide bomb. He's going to play patient, wait for these players to push up. Is going to spot one. Gets taken out instantly and traded though. And already Afro, last player up in the Extelkis base, is trying to make a play here. Does not spot that player on the left. Is going to escape him though. Hydrel is going to go on the side bear if he wins this could cost them dearly no stops just yet he will escape with it no he won't reverse is able to at least get that and no more players are left alive Tackett is gonna pretty much run away with this one at this point and there you go 4-1 lead in favor of rejects at war Python gets turned on right there trying to do something for his team Tackett does have streaks, instantly calls them in, calls out all those players inside of his base, is going to wait them out and try to get more streaks, only 25 off, gets turned on there, of course the player was weak, and Telkis do get a flag pull, only one player left alive, they can rotate and they can overextend. Of course, there is an artillery barrage called in on the Extelkis base, so it's pretty much not safe to try to get a cap. He is going to go through the back way to try to get this cap, and he will at least try to dolphin dive for it, and he does get it. Two players do fall for rejects at war. Extelkis only have 20 seconds. They need to try to make something here, but Afro gets the flag pull. Extelkis not really having anybody to stop him. I mean, there is one player in... He, he does clean him up, but 10 seconds left. Nothing really left to do. They can get a, a touch and increase the time, but they have to do it now. And hot, not able to get it done. And rejects at war. Into the game, off to 3-0 Extelkis. Both matches today ending in 3-0s. Rejects at War will go to 3-0 in your Pool Play League. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in tonight. I am your caster, Z Shadow GG. I was joined by my partner, Pangan. Unfortunately, he did have some connection issues, and he did fall out. I had to finish the rest of the series by myself, but it is A-OK. -okay. Anyway, if you guys are interested... Please do hit that follow button. Do not hesitate. We have matches daily. Tomorrow we will be bringing you even more matches. I will not be fortunately casting, but 
We do have a brand new caster joining the desk. Hope you guys can treat her well. Ah, that's all I got here at VNM League Season 4. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you do drop a follow. As always, ladies and gentlemen, it's been your boy Shadow. Take it easy.